So if you're not seeing the bullet trace, we'll try to get you as, as best we can how to get positioned correctly to, to see it. Um, and the reason that splash is not a reliable method is because uh, there's a lot of dynamics that happen when in thermal ballistics. When a bullet explodes, ricochets uh, before debris materializes enough to be seen at long distances, um, there's a lot of weird stuff, and we'll discuss that in detail too. When you say splash, that's referring to the uh, dust cloud or whatever. Yes, the poof, the, the poof. poof, yeah, where the bullet hits. Poof, you see dirt fly, you see a poof of dirt. Now, that's what we're going to call splash. Yeah, primary splash, that's observing exactly where the bullet hit due to the displacement material. Poof! You got a poof of dirt, you got something, you can see the cratering of where you hit. Pretty obvious under the right conditions of where it's hit. Not sure about that one. If you hit a steel target, you're going to have what they call peripheral splash. And that's where the bullet disintegrates on a flat piece of steel and all that lead and copper jacket goes in 360 degrees and it's going to create like a, like a cutting effect on the ground immediately perpendicular to where the target's situated. And you're going to see like a halo of dust around the target happen. So you might see splash on this side, you might see splash on this side and you'll have a real nice peripheral splash. That'll indicate a hit on a steel target. On sight. Ready? Hit. Shooter ready. You have the green light. Hit. Roger that. I'm ready for a new target. You have secondary splash, which is a piece of the target, a fragment of the target, or pieces of the bullet ricochet off of there and create splash in other areas adjacent to the target someplace. That can be very deceptive, and that's tricky, especially if you're shooting at iron or if you're shooting at uh, hard targets and hard target interdiction applications. That's where it gets real deceptive, and you have to really be able to read that, but it's very hard to read uh, secondary splash.
So in secondary splash, what you have is fragments of that target or uh, bullet fragments ricocheting all over the place at supersonic velocities and they're going to be kicking stuff up all over the place. Now when you're shooting sometimes in a rocky environment, that can be tricky because you can have, if you're shooting at a piece of steel, the bullet can ricochet, a piece of it will ricochet off this rock and it will bounce up here and it will kick up dirt here. It's very, very tricky to read sometimes depending on your background. If you have a nice, soft, consistent dirt background, like in a sand environment or something like that or up against an embankment of clay, that's really easy to kind of spot what's going on there. But especially if you have like asymmetrical obstacles placed around the object in goofy ways, it can be uh, real, real tricky. Your secondary splash could actually cause your peripheral splash then, couldn't it? Absolutely, and it all mixes up in different ways. The primary means, like I'm going to say again, has to really be bullet trace. Okay? Now, if you do have peripheral splash and it's real nice, perfect around the target, that's a clear indication of a hit. If you have weird anomalies, I can play, I got lots of different uh, footage of different kinds of splash over all the long range stuff we filmed. And there's a few times we're shooting the big 50 cals, because that's real obvious, it's enough mass in the bullet where it over exaggerates what we're seeing. Uh, it was a direct hit on the steel, it knocked the target over, there's no doubt it was hit, but then you see secondary splash like six feet off to the side. That's because your bullet fragments ricocheted off to the side and made a poof. So you don't want to look for the poof, <laughs> or the mushroom cloud, or the, the cratering, or whatever you want to call it, the splash as we're calling it, as a primary means of determining where the bullet hit. Because you want to know where the bullet actually was headed. Okay. All that other stuff doesn't really matter. We talked about bullet trace. I'm going to reiterate this several times. Primary method of spotting the round. If you can see the bullet trace going straight in the target, you're going to be able to detect near misses. Uh, you're going to be able to detect hits. Sometimes you hit the target and you don't really know it. You can't see it. So if you have a miss, a lot of times you're going to see a real clear splash come from somewhere other than the target directly. And it's going to be a very robust cannonball effect type poof displacement of material it's going to make us if you have wet dirt it'll be a real dark uh you know displacement if you have like a drier conditions it might be kind of a white poof of dust depending on what you're shooting into now an animate target you're going to see for those of you who have seen large game hunting or whatever and you see the impact you'll see a hit sometimes. Sometimes you won't see hit. It might be more difficult to spot on different targets. So it is very important to be able to observe that bullet trace because it will show you exactly where you're hitting. And on a piece of steel, unless you have it painted white, it is kind of difficult to determine exactly where you hit sometimes. It might leave a little bit of a, a lead mark on the steel, but at 1,000 meters, it's going to be hard to see that. Mm -hmm. If you got a, a piece of steel painted white, you'll see a nice black dot. Um, but that's kind of like in perfect range conditions, okay? And with the uh, splash discussion, also, like you were saying, it depends on what kind of material you're shooting into. Sometimes your splash won't be visible if it's uh, something yep. that'll absorb the bullet. Absolutely. Um, good example is grass. If you got vegetative cover, that bullet is going to hit someplace you're never going to see any splash. It's going to be absorbed into the the vegetation, the roots and the grass clumps and whatever, so you might not even see any kind of splash. Or if you do, it might not materialize, it might kick something up, but you're not going to see that clear impact crater. You're going to see the dust come up, and if you got even a small wind, three, five mile an hour wind, by the time that dust materializes, it might be three feet off to the side. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see spotters make, is using splash as a primary means of determining where that bullet hit because that doesn't work most of the time. Unless you've got like in a desert environment or if you've got the perfect conditions, if you're shooting into a real obvious backdrop like a hill that's wet and you can see that mark where that bullet hit, splash is a real crappy way of determining where you hit, especially in dry conditions because you're gonna have dust pop up in weird places. Like a lot of times you'll shoot and the dust will atomize and before it really reflects the light, before you notice the cloud, it might be off to the side quite a bit and moving. The wind will take it. Yeah, the wind will take it all over the place. It'll throw you off. I've seen guys adjust 10 feet off to one side and then back the other way because the spotter was calling the hits totally wrong because he was going, well, I saw a poof off to the left. When I hear a spotter say the word poof or <laughs> splash, 
credibility goes right out the window. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, and you wouldn't know unless you've been doing it for a while, but you got to really use that bullet trace. And if you absolutely don't have any trace, you got to really become familiar with a lot of experience on how to read splash, because that's tricky. Oh, oh. 